In this video I'm going to code our GUI menu. Here's the finished product. We've removed the units that can walk in the game and we've just displayed the buildings, so the wooden post and the, the solar farm. And we've got rollover graphics as well. Okay, so we'll generate this menu in this video. So here I am in our project. From the previous video I've added some rollover icons to the unit icons folder. Just remember to change these to a GUI texture type and filter mode point otherwise they'll, um, Unity will try and blend these these textures into the scene and they'll be very blurry so make sure to change these. So I'm just going to reveal these in the finder just to give you guys an idea of what they are like. I've added a two pixel border um, but the thing is we don't need to actually tell Unity there's a border because these icons are not going to change um, they're not going to stretch or change size or anything so Unity doesn't need to know. We define borders in Unity in GUI styles um, as an offset on each side of the image. Okay, so if that was the case, Unity would ignore the rest these these borders and stretch the rest of the image. Not needed in this case. Um, so we need to assign these rollover images to our units in the game. So from the previous video, we can add another texture 2D menu icon rollover. So I'm just going to spend a couple of seconds to put these rollover images inside our units female humanoid rollover robot rollover solar farm cool so these icons are very simple this good job this isn't a uh, an artwork of course it's just a menu tutorial but now we have these rollover images we can then assign them to our list in our menu setup okay I'm going to copy and paste this line of code and just put RO here and then we can copy this and add it when we loop through the units when we first start the game. So we did this in the previous video. So adding to the rollover, we can actually get to the rollover icon as well. So menu icon rollover, changing the name, copying it in here and uh, so now we have the information in our list in our menu setup when the game first starts. So now we can go ahead and code the onGUI method to display the menu. But firstly I'd like to import another image. I've called it plate. It's the background image of our menu. As you can see it just looks like a metal texture with holes inside of it. And uh, this is what I'm going to use for the menu background, GUI plate. I'll put these uh, text is on Unity chat channel for you guys to download if you're following along. I'm going to attach the background as a public texture 2D. This is the only thing we're going to assign at the top of the class. Uh, icon container let's say. This is going to contain our um, buttons. So this is the only thing we need to do here. I'm going to go and drag this texture on top of my icon container. So to create this menu we just need to know some very basic G GUI code. For each of the buttons we're going to create a separate GUI style and then assign their background um, to the normal and hover state. But firstly let's make the background. GUI style, let's call this container equals a new GUI style. So why haven't we assigned a new GUI style here? I'm going to show you guys something here, so test style. Okay. So if we make a public GUI style and change this within the Unity interface, there are lots of uh, different options available here and we're not going to use many of these at all. We only need to use the normal state of the button and also the hover state. Okay, But feel free to use the active and focused if you like. We're going to just use these in this video. So as you can see we don't need any of this stuff. We don't need to change the border. We don't need padding or anything. The button is just a background image. so that's why we're not going to use them in the interface. So with my GUI style um, defined on my container we can say container normal accessing that normal state of the GUI style um, background and we can say equals icon container okay and now we can simply assign this so let's just get rid of this for a sec so now we can actually create our container. By the way this container is 400 pixels wide and 50 pixels in height. Okay guys, 
but my icons are only 39 pixels in height so I'm only going to move this container 40 pixels above the, the bottom of this the screen but we'll, I'll show you how to do that now so to create this container we can say GUI box a new rectangle so we need to give this a position the screen width divided by 2 then we're going to minus 200 pixels so half of the container now it's going to be right in the middle of the screen for the height we can say screen height so we're going to, I'm going to minus 40 pixels so it's going to pop up 40 pixels from the bottom of the screen even though this is 50 pixels I know this will be too high for my for my buttons so I'm just going to move it up 40 pixels from here we can actually assign its width and height 400 units cross 50 going down cool so it's going to have no content inside of it and the GUI style is going to be container ok I'm going to save this now and um, see if this works in the game so here we are the container is showing in the game it's poking up 40 pixels from the bottom of the screen ok so now, now we can go ahead and generate all the buttons within this container in this for loop so generate unit buttons so we can just loop through any of these lists because they're all going to be the same length or have as many items in all of them I'm going to loop through the unit names so we're not going to debug anything now so every time we create a new button we're going to offset offset it from the left side so the first one isn't going to be offset at all it's going to be right at the side then we're going to offset the next one a number of pixels the next one's going to be offset a number of pixels okay so I'm going to define integer offset is going to be 48 pixels okay I'm also going to find and define another integer called j equals 0 we've used i already so we just go down alphabetically to use j in most cases this is going to um, count how many non walkable units there are okay so the first thing we can do is create a new GUI style for this button so the way we're going to do this is, is create a style but the next item in the loop is going to overwrite the style but it's, it's no worries because we will not use this in the future once these buttons are created they're not going to be manipulated in any way so we can say GUI style icon defining another GUI style we can then go ahead and assign the background images to the normal state normal background equals units icon textures at this index then we can go to the hover state so these are the states we we looked at previously in the unity editor uh, in the GUI style background unit icon textures roll over at this index so we have the background images assigned to this GUI style now we can create the button so if GUI button new rectangle so the, the first icon is going to be the screen width divided by 2 so we're, again putting it in the middle but this time I'm going to minus 199 so there's one pixel space between the side of the container and where this icon is situated so then we can say plus offset times j so as this loop continues um, each icon will be offset an, another 48 pixels this one will not be offset at all because j is 0 and we haven't incremented j yet the next one will be 48 pixels the next one will be 96 so self explanatory the height in this case is going to be screen height minus 39 again there's one pixel space between the top of the container and where this button is and now we can just define the width and height of this icon so I know they're 46 in width 39 in height I'm going to close this off there is no uh, content within this button so just leave these a blank the GUI style is our icon style so now we have the button created so we need to test and see if this works in the next video we'll be using this to spawn our units so I'm going to say debug log so I'm going to log out unit names at this index and finally after this we can then increment j cool so I hope, it, I hope this is self explanatory j is just a, a, a method to offset the icons further each time okay so let's see if this works now all of our units should be displaying in this menu 
So here we are. Here are the buttons. When I roll over them, they change background image based on the hover state. And when I click them, I'm debugging the the name of the icon itself. But um, we don't need the humanoid robot and the the robot in this menu because because we can't build them. We can only build these wooden posts and the solar panel. So to address this, we can test if this unit we are looping through is walkable. If the unit is not walkable, we know they can be created. So to determine whether this is walkable or not, this unit, we can get we can load the unit into the script. So game object unit equals resources load unit paths at this index. Remember this this list stores the path where the unit is situated in our in the editor within the resources folder. So down here. Okay, once we've loaded this type of game object to cast it as and we can cast this as a game object so then we can say if this unit is walkable so it gets component unit script is walkable then we're going to continue this loop okay so if the unit's walkable we're not interested in displaying it within our menu so we just go to the next item in our for loop and ignore all of this okay so as you can see, we can't use the i to times the offset because if we did and we find a walkable unit, there'll be a big gap between the buttons in the menu. That's why we use j in this case. Okay, so let's just see if this works. So now all we can see in our menu is the non-walkable units, so the wooden post and the solar panel. Cool, so we've set up our little menu. In the next video, we can use these buttons to um, instantiate these units in the game. Thanks for watching the video.